good afternoon this is the next session on gate physics problem solving so for those of you who are joining for the first time i will share the relevant and important links uh, pertaining to this course in the zoom chat box so the first link over here is the link to the youtube channel so uh, we have a youtube channel where you can find uh, many videos on gate physics problem solving as well as uh, these sessions that we are having will be live streamed on the youtube channel and you can go ahead and uh, visit uh, the video recordings of the previous sessions as well so check this link and go ahead and subscribe to the youtube channel the next link is the google drive folder link so every session we upload these lecture notes on that google drive folder so if you want to have a look at the lecture notes you can download from the google drive and the third link is a link to the discord server for our course so this is a discord server that we have created and you can join that server and you can post your questions on the discord server as well and uh, either i will answer them or even your friends can answer them so you you need not wait for this uh, weekly saturday sessions uh, you can directly ask in the discord server and you will get uh, solutions to those problems and queries uh, quicker so these were the logistical details for the course now as always uh, we will start with a few general aptitude questions and then will we will move on to uh, some other physics based questions so today we will look at quantum mechanics so first we will uh, solve some general aptitude questions and then we will move on to quantum mechanics so let's get started so the first question in general aptitude over here uh, states that fatima starts from point p goes north for 3 kilometers and then east for 4 kilometers to reach q she then turns to face point p and goes 15 kilometers in that direction she then goes north for 6 kilometers how far is she from point p and in which direction should she go to reach point p so let us draw our coordinate system so this is the north south direction and then east west direction so let us say we are at the origin for point p this is north this is south this is east and west so what does the question say it says that uh, fatima goes north for 3 kilometers so let me move this little bit towards the center maybe it would higher up So we have our point P once again, and this is east. This is west. So we need to move north three kilometers. So one, two, three. So three kilometers over here. So we move north by three kilometers. and then what do we need to go we need to go east by 4 kilometers so we need to go 1 2 3 4 east 4 kilometers that means we move up to here so this is 3 this is 4 and 
we are over here. Now what the question says that she then turns to face uh, point P that means in this direction and goes 15 kilometers in that direction. So uh, you can clearly see that this distance like going up until point P this distance would be 5 kilometers. Why? Because this is a right angled triangle, right angled with uh, one side 3 and one, another side uh, 4. So as a result, this hypotenuse is going to be 5 and then we need to go 15 kilometers. That is 5 is done, so 10 more kilometers. So let me draw these points. So 5 kilometers is done, 10 kilometers needs to be added. So this will be at the coordinates 6 and 8, minus 6 and minus 8 rather, minus 6, minus 8. And we continue moving and we reach about this point. So this is 10. So the total is then 10 plus 5 that is 15 and after this we need to move towards north for 6 kilometers that means we move north by 6 kilometers and then we come here so you can clearly see now that the distance from the point p is this 8 kilometers and she needs to move in the direction uh, towards east so the answer is 8 kilometers towards east. So how we drew this point? Well this point we drew just because so 1, 2, 3, 4. So this point is minus 4. This point is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So if you come to this point, this point would be uh, 5 uh, kilometers from the origin and then you need to go another 3 and another 4 so this 4 and this 3 to cover another 5 kilometers so that makes it 5 5 5 that is 15 kilometers so this is pretty much simple question then the next question is a grammatical question english based question the question says that it's a fill in the blanks question it is it is dash to read this year's textbook dash the last years. So the correct answer is option A. It is easier to read this year's textbook than the last years. Next question, another uh, English based question. The 9th and the 10th of this month are Monday and Tuesday dash. So the correct option is Monday and Tuesday respectively. And as you might be knowing that we always refer to Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary for any vocabulary based question. So according to the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary, the meaning of respectively is in the same order, in the same order, as the people or things mentioned. So uh, this is the meaning of respectively according to Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary. So moving on to the next question. The binary operation uh, denoted by this symbol is defined as A, opera, uh, a uh, this operation. So this operation is a binary operation. So the operation when uh, this operation is applied to two numbers say A and B then the result is AB plus A plus B where A and B are two real numbers. The value of the identity element of this operation defined as the number x such that a so such that when x operates on a 
uh, then we get A itself. So we need to find out the identity element. So identity element definition is that, this is the definition for identity, that it leaves the number unchanged. So when you, uh, when you operate two numbers and the number is unchanged, then one of them is the identity element. So according to the definition of the operation, we have so a and x when they are operated by this binary operation then we get ax plus a plus x and this should be equal to a according to definition of identity so we can simplify this and this is true for any a true for any a so clearly we have x equal to 0. So x equal to 0 is the identity element corresponding to this binary operation defined as follows. So this completes our section on general aptitude. Now we will move to the section on quantum mechanics. So the first question in quantum mechanics, it is a question based on commutators. So, if Lx, Ly and Lz are respectively the x, y and z components of angular momentum operator L, then the commutator Lx, Ly, Lz is equal to, we need to find out. This so, let us start. We know that uh, the commutator of any two components of angular momentum, let's say L i L j, it is given as follows, like this. And also, if we have a commutator like this between, uh, so A b comma C, where A b C are operators, then this is equal to the following. So we will make use of these two identities and solve this question. So we have Lx, Ly, Lz. So by using this, we will get Lx, Ly, Lz plus Lx, Lz, Ly. And now we will make use of this. So we have Lx. I H cross L X plus now X and Z. So this will be minus I H cross L Y and then L Y. So this is I H cross L X squared minus L Y squared. Pretty simple question and the correct option is option C. Then we have a statement linked question. That means we have a statement and there are two questions based on this statement. So the statement is in a one dimensional harmonic oscillator, uh, psi naught, psi one and psi two, or pi naught, pi one and pi two are respectively the ground first and second excited states. These three states are normalized and are orthogonal to one another and psi1 and psi2 are two states defined by so we have psi1 in terms of this phi naught phi1 and phi2 and psi2 also in terms of this phi naught phi1 and phi2 and alpha is a constant so we need to find out the value of alpha for which psi2 is orthogonal to psi1 so the orthogonality condition orthogonality condition is given as follows so this is the orthogonality condition and uh, if we put in the expression for our psi 2 and psi 1 then we get
the following this is just the inner product and these terms are uh, normalized that is normalized and orthogonal so from this we get 1 plus 2 plus 3 alpha and thus our alpha comes out to be negative 1 so option c the next part of this question of the statement is that for the value of alpha determined above the expectation value of the energy of the oscillator in the state psi 2 is we need to find out so what is our state psi 2 let us just write it down once again so now we know the value of alpha so this becomes the following and the energy for harmonic oscillator in ith state is given as follows i plus half h cross omega or rather instead of i i think i should use a better notation maybe n So, in the nth level, En is n plus half h cross omega. So, this is for a 1D harmonic oscillator. And energy is simply the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. So, energy for the state psi 2 would be expectation value of the Hamiltonian which is given as follows and the denominator is for the normalization so this gives us the following so in a product of psi 2 with itself is 1 plus 1 plus 1 that's 3 so this comes out to be let us find out so putting n equal to 0 gives us h cross omega by 2 then for the second term n equal to 1 that gives us 3 h cross omega by 2 for the second term, n equal to 2 gives us 5h cross omega by 2. So, 9h cross omega by 2 into 3, which is equal to 3 by 2h cross omega. Option B. Moving on. The next question is the wave function of particle moving in free space is given by psi is equal to e to the power i k x plus 2 e to the power minus i k x. Then the energy of the particle is we need to find out. This is also a statement linked question. So the statement is given that the wave function of the free particle is given as follows of particle in free space is given as follows and then the first question is for energy and the next uh, question is on probability current density so first let us look at the first question so for the free particle we have the following so this is the schrodinger's equation and for a free particle my uh, hamiltonian is simply h cross minus h cross squared by 2m d squared by dx squared equal to e psi so there is no a uh, potential energy term over here because it is a particle uh, moving in free space so there is no potential energy function so let us solve this so we have the following let us evaluate this expression
so our psi is e to the power i k x plus 2 e to the power minus i k x so differentiating two times would give us i k squared e to the power i k x as it is and then the second term minus i k squared and e to the power and 2 e to the power minus i k x as it is so let's simplify further And this right here is nothing but my original wave function. And this is from the Schrodinger's equation. So clearly, this term is my energy. That is, energy is h cross squared k squared over 2m. So option C is the correct option. The next question, based on this statement, is to find out the probability current density. Now, the probability current density is given as follows. And we need to find out the probability current density for the real part of the wave function. So real part of the wave function is the following so this is 3 cos kx this is the real part of the wave function and the probability current density for this would be let us evaluate so psi star so this is real so psi star is equal to psi so this is simply 3 cos kx as it is then the first derivative so first derivative would be minus 3k sine kx and then negative of psi so psi is 3 cos kx and derivative of psi star so psi star is same as psi for a real uh, for the real part so this is a minus 3k sine kx so clearly we can see that this is equal to zero sorry not sin k sin kx cos kx and this is equal to 0 these terms cancel out the next question the recoil momentum of an atom is pa when it emits an infrared photon of wavelength 1500 nanometers and it is pb when it emits a photon of visible visible wavelength 500 nanometers and we need to find out the ratio PA over PB. Now P is the momentum, recoil momentum and this is given by the following. So remember this wavelength lambda is also called the De Broglie wavelength. So De Broglie wavelength lambda. And we will use this expression to solve this question. So PA over PB is nothing but H over lambda A over H over lambda B. H cancels. So we are left with lambda B over lambda A. And lambda B is 500 nanometers visible wavelength. 
and lambda a is infrared wavelength 1500 nanometers so this is 1 over 3 so the ratio is 1 is to 3 the next question is also based on commutators if x and p are the x components of the position and momentum operators of a particle respectively uh, the commutator x squared comma p squared is we need to find out also note the usage of respectively we saw in general aptitude question uh english based vocabulary question of the usage of respectively so you should uh take a note of how it is being used so let us come back to this question on commutators and we will use the identity that we saw earlier in this video We will make use of this identity repeatedly. And another identity that we will use is the following. And also x comma p uh, commutator is i h cross. So these are the three identities that we will make use of. So let us start. So we will flip this order to make it p squared comma x that's why the negative sign and we will again use this first identity Sorry, I missed one term over here. Yeah. And then we will use this commutator of x comma p. And again, flipping of the sign to flip the orders. So, x, p, i, h cross. So we will combine these two terms. So we get 2ih cross xp plus px. So which one is the correct option? 2ih cross xp plus px. Option D is the correct option in this case. Moving on to the next question. Let L, M be the simultaneous eigenstates of L squared and LZ. Here L is the angular momentum operator with Cartesian components LX, LY and LZ. And L is the uh, small L is the angular momentum quantum number and M is the azimuthal quantum number. So we need to find out the value of this term given over here. So let us start uh, so we will make use of uh, certain identities in this question so the first one is that we have the ladder operator l plus operator which is lx plus i l y and for this we have that if this ladder operator acts on the state l m then what we get is h cross square root l minus m times l plus m plus 1 and the state is raised by one term that is m plus 1 that's why it's also called raising operator so this is called raising operator so let us uh, solve this question
So this term is nothing but L plus or the ladder raising operator. And this ladder operator acts on this state where L is equal to 1 and M is equal to minus 1. So what we get is H cross and L minus M. So square root of L minus M that is 1 minus minus 1. So that's 2. And then L plus M plus 1. So that is 1 minus 1 plus 1. So that's 1. And the state is raised by 1. So that is 1 comma 0. So this gives us root 2 H cross. And these are normalized states. So this will be 1. So this is simply root 2 H cross. Option C. Finally, we have the last question for today's session, after which we can uh, take up any question ans uh, questions that you have, any doubts that you have. So after this, we will have question answers. So the last question is, the state of a system is given by psi is equal to phi 1 plus 2 phi 2 plus 3 phi 3, where phi 1, phi 2 and phi 3 form an orthonormal set. The probability of finding the system in the state phi 2 is we need to find out. So very simple question. So probability of finding state in phi 2 is nothing but the mod squared of the coefficient of phi 2. So that is mod 2 squared divided by the following for normalization. So this is 2 squared by 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. So 4 divided by 1 plus 4 plus 9. This is approximately 0 0.286. So this is the probability of finding the state in uh, finding the system in the state phi 2. So this completes our uh, session for today in which we looked at a few general aptitude questions and then a whole bunch of questions from quantum mechanics and in particular we also looked at some of uh, the statement linked type of questions so in your exam you will have these kind of statement linked type questions in which you have this one statement over here so this statement over here and then a few questions based on that statement similarly you also have these numerical answer type questions in which you need to solve the question and there are no multiple choice options you need to solve the question and write down the numerical value that you obtain and it will be specified up to which decimal place that you need to specify so typically it is up to two decimal points so up to two decimal points this will be 0 0.29 so you need to be careful up to which decimal place they want the answer so these are the different kind of questions that you will have. So multiple choice questions, uh, numerical answer type questions, statement linked questions, and of course in general aptitude some logical questions and some English based uh, grammar and vocabulary questions as well. So this completes uh, the session for today. And once again I will provide the links in the Zoom chat box. So you can save them and bookmark them for your future reference. So thank you.